Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone. Um, nice to be back here and uh, coinciding with uh, the other uh, other things that uh, I was doing on my brief visit here. Then uh, Nimai's initiation, something that uh, he he maneuvered to put in. <laughs> you already done Achman? But can we do it again? So I have to do it, so we may as well do it. Uh, bear with us. We'll chant this mantra. Everyone can chant. And uh, it's for both our inner purification and at the same time give us direction on uh, what actually this ceremony is about. I have one here. And we'll, it's just this wire here. Okay, let's see if this stands. So we say this mantra. Om. Apavitra, Pavitrova, Sarvavastan, Gatopiva, Yasmarit, Pundarikaksham, Sabhaya, Avyantara, Shuchi, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu. You know how to do it? Om Keshavai Namaha, Om Narayana Namaha, Om Narayana Namaha. It's not very Brahminical when the water drips all over you, but... Um, Om, Om Apavitra, Pavitrova, Sarvabastam, Katopiva, Yasmarit, Pundarikaksham, Sabhaya, Abhyantara, Shuchi, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu. Second time. Keshavai Namaha, Om Narayi Namaha, Om Narayi Namaha. Om Apavitra, Pavitrova, Sarvavastan, Gatopiva, Yasmarit, Pundarikaksham, Sabhaya, Abhyantara, Shuchi, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya 15. Om Apavitra Pavitrova Sarvavastam Gatopiva Yasmarit Pundarikaksham Sabhaya Abhyantara Shuchi Shri Vishnu Shri Vishnu Shri Vishnu Namam Vishnu Brahe Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shumati Bhakti Veranta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Pashyata Desha Tarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Shri Advaita Gradha Shri Vashari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare um, my respect to uh, my illustrious god brothers and god sisters and the non illustrious god brothers and god sisters and everyone else present. Um, I'm, uh, we'll speak on uh, at 
least one particular verse, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, says in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. But I don't know what kind of introduction uh, Pranabandhu is going to make, but in the meantime, I guess I can just talk here about the Madan Mohan family. And, uh, of course, uh, here uh, we're missing uh, Nimai's mother, Bharati, who, well, I've been sort of involved. At least I know Nimai before before he was around. <laughs> uh, and uh, in... Uh, in those days, well, those days just goes back to the early 80s, then there were uh, certain designated lunch spots in the manor area where, uh, where we would go, we meaning devotees. And, uh, not that Prasadam wasn't satisfactory here at the manor, but still. And uh, Madan Mohan's place was uh, one of those. I mean, you reminded me yesterday, I couldn't quite, I I caught the picture, I remember sort of the picture, myself, Bhaktivedi Purnamaraj, Sachinanamaraj, laying on top of each other after after Prasadam. I mean, not on top of each other like this, but in sort of a card-wise fashion. And... uh, And Bharati was a really wonderful, wonderful cook, such a nice person. Uh, Certainly her presence is really sorely missed. And I think all of you know uh, this family. Of course, Madan Mohan, he comes from the same generation of devotees, as Shruti and Prana. And and although he didn't uh, he didn't move in and uh, come full-time as, uh, as they did. But uh, at least in my perspective, in my experience, he's really full-time. Uh, he's, uh, although he was up there in Northwood Pharmacy, which is sort of a branch extension of Bhaktivedanta Manor. <laughs> that was where I first, first met him. I don't know. We went there for, I don't know, either some medication or... And uh, we went to sell him a set of grand classics. Oh, yeah, because Madan Mohan was his sort of a type of devotee that whatever edition of Prabhupada's books we got, we could keep selling them. <laughs> <laughs> How many editions you got? <laughs> Those were the grand classics, yeah, at that time, and uh. And I think he's uh, the type of person that, uh, and his brother, that Srila Prabhupada envisaged, who, uh, and what he expected from the, uh, from the Indian community, that this is your religion, it's your dharma, so either if you're not going to take sannyas, and if you're not going to give your life, uh, in terms of from within the confines of the temple, then you have to support it. Uh, and that's how Bhaktivedanta Manor really became what it is, because there's not just one such patrons of, uh, of the manor uh, as this family, but there are many. And, uh, and that's why we're going to also have uh, Haveli, Next October, you say we're planning. Okay. Well, these are sort of famous last words regarding construction. <laughs> <laughs> Things unfortunately don't happen the way they're supposed to, but uh, it will happen. And when it does, Shula Prabhupada will be very pleased that finally it may not be a thirty-story temple that he wanted in the tennis court but it it will be uh, the type of uh, facility that will enable devotees to stretch a little. Although my prediction is 
that as soon as that building is finished, it's too small. <laughs> Don't tell Hertz Borough Council that. But uh, anyway, but I think uh, that's sort of something that uh, those devotees who have been involved here is like a real a peg or a goal, a destination that we're going to, that things are going to change. I hear things that from Prana that he's retiring after that, once that's there. And uh, let's see what Radha Gokul, what plans Radha Gokulanda has. Uh, I, I think they may be a little different. And, uh, and Nimai, he's... Well, he is. He's sort of Prana's protege, because remember when he was very small, he sort of kept bringing him around, and he said, uh, you know, you got to give him a little mercy. And uh, anyway, here he is, not because of my mercy, but because of all the Vaishnavas' mercy, and, uh, and he's also full on. Yesterday we were speaking, and... I was mentioning that our, our real business is that Krishna consciousness is our full-time business. We've got other, other issues, other things to do, uh, such as maintaining a business, maintaining our bodies, uh, other obligations. But those, those should always be secondary. Our primary business is somehow or another how to serve Srila Prabhupada's mission, uh, which is really a has a grand vision. Uh, of course, it's following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own prediction, Prithiviti Atriyatra Nagaradigram. So every town and village, it's pretty grand. It's a grand conception. We're sort of in this village, which is part of this huge big city. And, uh, but there's more, there's a lot more a lot more certainly to achieve uh, in this country, uh, that, uh, that this Krishna consciousness movement is actually seen as the spiritual authority on all matters. Not just that it's the representative of the Hindu community, but if you want to know something about what's the ultimate spiritual vision on a topic, and if you want to know what the ultimate conclusion of spiritual life is, Go to the Hare Krishnas. Ultimately, that's what our teachings uh, are all about. And this particular uh, science of Bhagavad Vidhi, in the mornings we say, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavatutma Shloki, Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki. The process, just like Madhava Prabhu was chanting here, and then he'll continue to chant. Actually, this Yagyai Sankirtana Prayer Yajantihi Sumedasa, this is the answer that Karabhajana Muni gives to well, what, is, what is the Yuga Dharma for each age. He goes through the other preceding ages. Uh, what is the uh, Yuga Avatar for those ages? And how will, how will people actually attain perfection? The, this process of, uh, is, uh, is known as Bhagavat Vidhi. And Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya, Prabhupada always translates, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and associating with Bhagavatas. This is, this is really what Bhagavat Vidhi is. And that Bhagavat Vidhi per se uh, is the complete and most perfect means of perfection. It's also called Bhava Marg. It's, uh, it's the path of inner development through awakening, as Krishna says in the Gita, Bhava Jnana Tapasa Putramad Bhava Magata, uh, of actually awakening our love for Krishna and cultivating that love to its ultimate perfection, which is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had actually come to introduce something that anarpitam charim chirat karinava tirna kalo that for the most part is not known. Even today in India, it's not known 
by Srila Prabhupada's grace, it's getting better known by Iskand's preaching, it's getting better known. Um, in, well, not in contrast to, but parallel to. Parallel to this other process uh, of Archan Vidhi or Pancha Vidhi. The process of deity worship, initiation by transcendental mantras, uh, and so on. So Bhagavad Vidhi is one path, and Archana Vidhi is the other, and both of them go side by side. This Pancha Vidhi, or this initiation, is actually an aspect of that Pancha Vidhi. The Bhagavad Vidhi itself is completely independent of all of these, uh, of such uh, rituals. It's simply dependent upon bhava. If you got it, you're there. If you don't, then, and Prabhupada gives this example, it's like two tracks uh, of a train. And especially if you're talking about a, a tram, electric tram, then the electricity, well, forget about the ones with the electricity on the top, but then the electricity flows through one. So uh, our process of uh, Krishna consciousness is meant to incorporate both of these things, Pancha Trikividi and Bhagavad Vidi. The electricity and power flows through this Bhagavad Vidi, particularly Nama Sankirtan through chanting Hare Krishna and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. These are the two essential things. And these result in so Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam. Bhava means Smarana. How do you know that you're having Bhava or you're developing attachment to Krishna? Because it's thoughts of him spontaneously arise in the mind. And when thoughts of Krishna in terms of things that we've read in the Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, other books of Srila Prabhupada, when these thoughts are continuous, relenting, and they block everything out, then that's the real development of Krishna consciousness. So everyone, everyone can monitor their own minds and see what thoughts come up. And according to the thoughts that are there, that's how effectively we're actually situated in Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is not just the name of a religion. It means when you're always conscious of Krishna, that's, that's what's going on inside. Of course, not just here, but here, then that's Krishna consciousness. But going on one track, unless you're really experienced, just like I've seen these one-wheel bicycles are becoming a fad. I'm a little too old for that now. I'm not even supposed to have ride two-wheel bikes anymore. So uh, riding on one wheel, you have to really have balance. So this other track gives the balance, and this Pantra Trikivity gives the balance. Um, let me read chapter 5, 15, excuse me. And this is 108. Uh, and I'm speaking now on the importance of this initiation, even though it's actually, in one sense, uh, not the essential aspect of this Bhagavad Vidhi. But we have to keep in mind that there's one thing in terms of what the actual process of bhakti or the nature of bhakti is and where the bhaktas are. So you can say, I'm chanting Hare Krishna. I'm a devotee because I'm chanting Hare Krishna. But there's different types of chanting Hare Krishna, and not all chantings are the same. And therefore, not all types of devotees are the same. Uh, and there's a, a empowerment and the power of devotional service that we read about in Shastra. And very often, devotees get confused about the status of a devotee by comparison to the status of bhakti, which in itself is a manifestation of Krishna's internal potency, is swarup shakti. I'm doing bhakti. Because the external aspects of 
perfected devotional service or the devotional service that scriptures talks about is the same as the practicing chanting Hare Krishna. Hari Das Thakur is chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, Ramananda Roy is reciting Srimad Bhagavatam or Gadadhar Pandit. We chant Hare Krishna, we recite Srimad Bhagavatam. But that doesn't necessarily immediately equate to our chanting and their chanting are the same. So when you read Nectar of Devotion, uh, then Srila Prabhupada explains very clearly that one type of chanting is a product of bhav, while this other type of chanting is meant to actually induce the bhav. So one people, one class of devotees chant Hare Krishna because they're in ecstasy, and the other class of devotees chant Hare Krishna because they're hoping to get in ecstasy. Uh, Kriti sadyat bhavet sadhya bhava sa sadhanavida nitya siddha sabhavasya. So Rupa Goswami describes this process of sadhan. Kriti sadhya. By performing those activities by which one attains, wants to attain the sadhya or the perfectional stage of bhav, which is the preliminary stage of prema bhakti. So one is the effect, one type of chanting is the effect of bhakti, and the other chanting is trying to induce bhakti. They're very different. So when we hear the glories of the holy name, when we hear the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, we should not immediately equate or place ourselves on that platform. And because we're not on that platform, therefore we actually need the facility that's awarded to us by Nam Diksha, particularly Mantra Diksha, which we call second initiation. The worship of deities, is the worship of deities necessary? Its connection with Krishna is obligatory. But if it's already going on in your mind and heart, then, then it's already happening. But if it's not already going on full steam in your mind and heart, then you need an altar, and you need to install deities. So this is what uh, this particular verse is about, well-known verse. Uh, here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, replying to Satyaraj Khan, who's uh, Kulina Gram, one of the uh, uh, residents uh, of this village, who are all sort of Vaishnavas, and they all kept asking Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, tell us who a devotee is. And this is repeated three times uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrita and Locha. Chaitanya talks about three types of devotees, the Kanishtadikari, the Madhyamadikari, and the Uttamadikari. So here Satyaraj is saying, how can I recognize a Vaishnav? Please let me know what a Vaishnav is. What are his common symptoms? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Whoever chants the holy name of Krishna just once is worshipable and is the topmost human being. This is called a Kanishtadikari. Anyone who just says Krishna's name once, here the implication is that he's not saying it more. We're out on the street doing Harinam, downtown London. So many people, you know, they just in imitation, either jokingly or making fun, uh, or just an appreciation. They say, oh, the Hare Krishna is Krishna Krishna. It's a very rare thing for that name of Krishna to appear on someone's tongue. And according to Shastra, that type of chanting may be, by the grace of the Lord, more powerful than the type of chanting that you're doing here, sitting in the temple room two hours a day after Mangalarti, because it's not offensive. They don't have faith, so it's low level, ashradha, but it's namabas, because they're not committing any offense. It's coming just spontaneously, hela, I forget what the Sanskrit words are, either in derision or in joking, in jest, and so on. 
So it's very powerful. And Brahmande Brahmite Konya Bhagavan Jeev. And for these living entities who are wandering, countless living entities, wandering throughout the universe, that somehow or another they come in contact with the holy name, then Lord Chaitanya here says uh, that he is the topmost human being. He's got a bottle of beer in one hand and just came for a football game. It doesn't necessarily look like the topmost human being, but that's a material estimation. From the spiritual point of view, extremely fortunate. Uh, and how did he become fortunate? He became fortunate because some devotees decided to go out on Harinam. Not because it was a good football game, but because devotees actually took it upon themselves, all right, we'll take the risk. We'll go out and we'll chant. And it's happened. I've been on Harinam's downtown where we got attacked by uh, drunk uh, football fans. And you know the story. And the uh, good thing that police were just on hand, so they stopped them. And we just continued chanting along, but they were really, really upset. And coincidentally, this other kirtan party came in the other direction. There's a Ritvik kirtan party. <laughs> so the police had left by that time, so these guys really set on them. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya says everyone gets the results of their activities. <laughs> so, but still, they're very fortunate. Even that aside, because the and because if they said it once, they'll say it again. It becomes their qualification. They'll continue somehow or another. They'll say it again. And you know so many examples of someone who's come in contact with. Krishna consciousness, long time ago, either through a book, a devotee, prasadam, and that seed has started to sprout. Lord Chaitanya doesn't talk about, these come in uh, later parts of CC, uh, about the uh, uh, second class and first class devotee. Now the Lord says, Simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna, one is relieved from all the reactions of a sinful life. One can complete the nine processes of devotional service simply by chanting the holy name. And here's the one well-known verse. One does not have to undergo initiation or execute the activities required before initiation. One simply has to vibrate the holy name with his lips. Thus, even a man in the lowest class, Chandala, can be delivered. Prabhupada here gives a one, two, three, four, five page purport. By chanting the holy name of the Lord, one dissolves his entanglement in material activities. After this, one becomes very attracted to Krishna, and thus dormant love for Krishna is awakened. Sounds easy. Here, uh, this verse, verse 108, uh, where he says that one does not have to undergo initiation or execute activities required before initiation. Diksha purascharya bhi apikshana kari. This talks about the power of the holy name. Krishna is, we start off Srimad Bhagavatam. Abhigya Swarat. He's independent. Similarly, Krishna and Krishna's holy name, Abhinatva Namanamino, they're non different. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya is making that statement that Krishna's holy name and chanting Krishna's holy name and the potency of Krishna's holy name is not dependent on any ritual, on any formality, on any purificatory process. It acts on its own. It is the ultimate religious principle. It's not even a religious principle. Uh, just in last years dealing with uh, topics of Varnashram, I've started to make a distinction between spiritual and religious uh, or transcendent because there are so many religions, there are so many religious activities, there are so many prescribed religious prescriptions and religion very often denotes material activities that affect a certain type of purification 
a certain type of regulation so that actually real transcendental things can take effect. What's religious? No illicit sex, no intoxication, no gambling, no meat eating. That's religion. It's not Krishna consciousness. It's not, it's not mentioned here. This is, these are religious principles. This is, so you're meant to actually follow these principles. Why? Because uh, they keep you in a frame of mind, and ultimately they're meant to help us rise from the lower modes of nature to the mode of goodness, wherein practicing Krishna consciousness becomes much easier for the practitioner and becomes very effective. So religion and spiritual life or transcendence are, are uh, really uh, two things. So the holy name is not dependent. It is independent. It doesn't... You just chant Hare Krishna, and that one activity will awaken love of God, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu here says. But one has to chant it in a certain way. It has to be offenseless, and by offenseless chanting, one has to uh, attain to pure chanting, and by pure chanting, one attains bhava, the whole five pages Srila Prabhupada talks about is why it is that therefore we have initiation uh, within our Krishna consciousness movement. Prabhupada quotes uh, Jiva Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, uh, But Srila Prabhupada makes the statement that because devotees in our Krishna consciousness movement are generally not chanting offenselessly, therefore initiation is compulsory for them. They need to take shelter of this Panchrakriti system. Uh, they need to be able to worship Krishna without so that Krishna becomes further manifest within and in order to do that, they also have to follow that system. What to speak of the other regulated activities of Krishna consciousness that we perform? Rising early in the morning. You have to get up early in the morning. You have to have Mangal Arti. You have to do these things. Why do you have to do these things? Because you're not doing them naturally. Uh, if one was Krishna conscious, then it happens spontaneously. Sarva, did Prabhupada have an alarm clock? Huh? I don't think so. I never heard of Prabhupada having an alarm clock. Prabhupada would just woke up, if he even slept. Govinda Maharaj told me in 1977, and this was like in October, uh, he was in the room with, he was in the room with uh, uh, Bhavananda Prabhu and Srila Prabhupada. They were just there together, and he was he was just in the in the background, and uh, Bhavananda asked uh, Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Prabhupada sort of just awoke. He was because he was uh, bedridden, so he he awoke, and uh, Bhavananda asked Prabhupada, "Did you sleep well?" Prabhupada said, "You fool! I don't sleep." So, when you don't sleep, you don't have to wake up for Mangal Arti, because Mangal Arti is already going on. Although you don't do Mangal Arti in bed, you get out of bed, but it, it happens naturally. So, the, some aspect which is spontaneous, it's taking place naturally, and other is, well, you have to do it. And therefore, this Pantra Triki system is where we have to do it. So, here in uh, Srila Prabhupada quotes such verses. For instance, uh, it is the duty of every human being, this is from Hari Bhakti Vilas, uh, to surrender to a bona fide spiritual master, giving him everything body, mind, and intelligence. One must take a Vaishnava initiation from him. Um, unless one is initiated by a bona fide spiritual master, all his devotional activities are useless. 
a person who is not properly initiated can descend again into the animal species. Not because the Maha Mantra doesn't work, it's just because we see it. How many, uh, how many devotees are here? Uh, now I'm just, uh, that was sort of a rhetorical question about statistics. Uh, just recently when I was in uh, Hungary, I mentioned this uh, uh, statistic that our new Rajadam uh, farm, which now has been, next year is going to be the 25th year that it's existent. And, of course, we don't make devotees there because it's in the middle of nowhere. It's actually it's more like the end of nowhere. Uh, although, in Hungary, no, the end of nowhere is not very far from anywhere. It's, <laughs> it's a pretty small place. But, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we have about, on, on the uh, property, we have about 130 devotees uh, living there. And then we have another... 100 devotees uh, in the village, which is just two kilometers next door. But devotees who have been resident of the project, there have been 410 devotees living on the project. And uh, that sort of number just uh, came to me some time before. So it was very interesting. And I was discussing with the leaders, and I brought, uh, brought it up to devotees. What would be going on in... Uh, New Rajadam if there were three times as many devotees as there are now. In other words, the devotees never left. Why devotees go? Anyway, you know as much as I do. Well, maybe you don't. Uh, but uh, uh, there are multiple reasons. So devotees come to Krishna consciousness and they're either they become active to a certain degree, they take initiation, Sometimes there's a lot of initiates, but there aren't as many devotees as there are initiates. Uh, or at least those who really stick with those vows of initiation continue on, and not just sticking to initiation, because we're not meant to be like flies to fly paper or something like that, but who actually, bhavogyana tapasa puttamad bhava magata, who are really entering into this bhava mark, who are awakening their love for Krishna. And, uh, and for that reason, this regulation is such an important thing. And this diksha is such an important thing. We read Srimad Bhagavatam. I don't, there, there's not one, it's not, I don't think, there's not one initiation ceremony mentioned in the Bhagavatam. The, the Vidura is listening to Maitreya, he doesn't need to take the vows of no illicit sex, no intoxication, no gambling, no meat-eating. Uh, I've had experience here. I haven't experienced outside of initiating uh, devotees from the Indian community, and this is exclusively from the Indian community, that when, and generally they're elder, when you ask them to take these vows, they're really perplexed because they just thought this was life. Uh, I've been doing this for the last 60 years, 70 years. This is the way I was brought up. So why do I have to take a vow? It's like the fifth regulated principle is you've got to breathe. Everyone would be very perplexed. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, we do need to be able to uh, make that type of commitment uh, the commitments uh, that are here following the principles as is staying here, yes. Oh, yes, I was talking that uh, Vidura and either uh, are there any uh, initiation ceremonies there? And yet at the same time, there's great commitment from guru to disciple. They're giving their lives. They're accepting the word as the absolute truth. Uh, it's natural. It's life. That's what guru means. Uh, guru is, now it's becoming a fad. Forty years ago, it was a mystique. Thirty years ago, it was a leader of a cult. So we're sort of moving along. But the actual tradition itself uh, is something, especially in not even just this part of the world, uh, but in, uh, in the whole world, uh, is becoming uh, more and more uh, recognized. Um, and how does it work? 
Yata kanchanata yati kongso raso vidanina tata diksha vidanina dvijatam jayate indrinam. Sanatana Goswami says, by chemical manipulation, bell metal is turned into gold when touched by mercury. Similarly, when a person is properly initiated, he can acquire the qualities of a brahmana. Prabhupada gives the process of how you can make gold. Shruti, you know, the Haveli is easily built. <laughs> Problem is, you need the yogic process of digesting mercury, which if you studied chemistry, you're dead on the spot. And then you have to be able to pass water on top of bell metal with this digested mercury, and it'll turn into gold. Hare Krishna, I'm not making a recommendation here, by the <laughs> although there are some desperate temple presidents in the area. <laughs> so if they tell you this is part of the new Bhakta program, don't. <laughs> so this is uh, a diksha. I'm not going to go on too long. And uh, this is why we're... Uh, Nimai is making that uh, commitment uh, on that path. Uh, which, which is really a very wonderful path, a path that uh, opens to really the topmost perfection, uh, something I think I mentioned before uh, that is emphasized uh, by uh, Sanatana Goswami again in Brihad Bhagavatamrita in, uh, in uh, Gop Kumar's Attainment. Gop Kumar is a really good example of an advanced devotee. I mean, he's very advanced. He has no material desires. He chants his mantra by his mantra. He goes to heavenly planets. He goes, he becomes a Brahma. He becomes an Indra. He, he's communicating, Krishna speaking to him directly. And he gets as far as sort of the gates of Vaikuntha. But at that point, He's, he stopped. He said, now you can't get any further than this. Something going on? And uh, that's the Vaikuntha Judas who come and tell him. Uh, he said, and he's, now he's taking darshan of Lord Shiva and the Vaikuntha Judas as they're coming on their way into the material world to preach. They tell him, uh, okay, but this is as far as you get. You, you can't go any further because you're not chanting with Bhav. You don't have love. And the reason you don't have love is because you haven't studied Srimad Bhagavatam systematically. He's very pure-hearted, but he hasn't actually studied Bhagavatam. So he says, you don't get beyond this. You, you can attain liberation, and there he's seeing actually the uh, Mahakaleshwar, uh, Krishna's form in, into which Mayavadis merge. Uh, and so he, he sees, he's, son, he's seen so many incarnations of Krishna, but he really doesn't understand Bhagavad Tattva, uh, and he doesn't understand the process of Bhagavad Vidi. So they say, you go back to earth, you study Srimad Bhagavatam, and when you study Srimad Bhagavatam, then your chanting will really have effect. And then, as Krishna says, Bhavo jnana tapasa putra madbhava magata. By knowledge of me, people have awakened love for me. So that's why Srila Prabhupada stayed up all night to translate Srimad Bhagavatam. It wasn't just so we could go out and sell them. It was so that by the combination of Srimad Bhagavatam and chanting Hare Krishna, that these two things would enable us to go back home, back to Godhead. We shouldn't take it for granted. If this devotee goes through, and I don't know how many billions of years Gop Kumar is wandering uh, in a perfect, or at least in a semi-perfected stage, uh, if he becomes unqualified or if he requires further qualification, so we need that as well. Uh, so we need to do justice to Srila Prabhupada's efforts and Srila Prabhupada's books. Don't let them sit on shelves. Uh, 
There may be many editions of them, but at least we should be religiously studying Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, and by this chanting, and by the Srimad Bhagavatam, and by the association of real saints, real Vaishnavas. Ultimately, that's what will make the real initiation ceremony fruitful. Then, yes, one can awaken love for Krishna. Otherwise, Bahujan Makori Shravana Kirtana. You can continue chanting Hare Krishna for many lifetimes. And here it says, still, without that initiation, and if one is not very careful, then a devotee can again descend. This is a statement here. Hare Krishna. Hey, Mike. Uh, I don't know what the new name is going to be, but <laughs> it is, uh, thank you very much. And now you're going to make a big step to take uh, initiation, which is now finally signing the paper, uh, commitment. And I'm sure that uh, by taking this step, uh, you will definitely excel in your spiritual life and your contribution uh, to the future movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes, I thought you would have the Thank you.
is already on his passport. That's what my card would say. I had a little something, a consultation with Shruti this morning. So I just added to Nimai Sundara. That's... Yeah.